Hello everybody, the Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. Compliments of the season to everybody. I've taken a bit of a break. I haven't made any videos for the last two months, but I feel refreshed and I'm happy to start setting up the labs and getting back on the grind. So in this video, we're going to be going over VRFs, which is one of the more advanced functions that you can set up on a router, but it's really useful in many different scenarios. And I'm gonna teach you in two parts. And in this first part, I'm just going to show you how to set up what we call VRF Lite almost, where you separate your routing tables on a single router. So let's jump into the video. Alrighty, so let's jump into configuring VRFs and figuring out what the heck are they. So I'm going into Winbox and I'm just going to connect onto a neighbor, ISP3. I'm going to connect onto Ramon and I'm going to find client one. It's this router on the left hand side. So I'm just going to connect here. And now that we're in Winbox, let's just quickly discuss what is VRF. So VRF is short for virtual routing and forwarding. And it's basically a mechanism that's on routers that allows you to create multiple routing instances or multiple routing tables that the router can use to do lookups against. And what makes this very useful is it adds a layer of security to your network, but it, it also like separates everything completely. So any interfaces that you put in a different routing table, it would only be in that routing table. So the router won't just be able to get there anymore. The other networks won't be able to get there anymore. You're effectively creating two routers <laughs> inside a single physical router. And for ISPs, this is very great because you could have a couple of routers like on this ISP3 picture and they could run many different VRFs for many different customers that share the same type of IP routes. Because how basic is it for people to maybe have this 192.168.20.0 slash 24 route or even 00 um, slash 24. That's so stock standard. And if you only have one routing instance, and that means that route can only go to one place, it's going to cause a lot of hassles. But what we're doing now is we're going to be discussing VRF Lite, which is where we just configure this on a single router. In the next video, I'll cover doing this throughout the entire network. But let's just paint a picture. We've got a customer. This customer wants to effectively cut their network in half. They want their LAN network to be completely separate from their phone network. They don't want these two networks to see each other. And they want to do this without implementing firewall rules on the router. Because currently, if I go into like this LAN PC and I just go into my terminal and from this terminal, if I run a ping to 10.100.0.50, which is the phone's IP, I can get there. And the reason being is if I go back onto the router and if I look at my IP routes, let's just maximize that. You'll see there exists routes on the main routing table already for the LAN and the phone. So basically traffic's coming into the router and then it's just automatically doing a lookup and saying, hey, if I wanna get to the phones, I can use this interface and this is how I'm gonna get there. So, <laughs> We want to prevent that from happening now, and we're going to do this by isolating the phone network in its own VRF. So to do this, we're going to go into VRF, and then from VRF, you click on the plus, your routing mark, you can call this phones, or wh whatever the route needs to be. You could even say VRF underscore phones, just to keep it consistent. And then it's gonna ask you interfaces. So this is very important because you need to add the interfaces that you want to route, in its own VRF in here. So I'm going to select my phone VLAN and put that in the phone's VRF. I'm not going to worry about these other options. This I will cover in the next video when we go over the ISP side of VRFs. This is just now to get things started. So we're going to apply it. And if I go back to my routes, holy smokes, do you see that? One of the routes has vanished and it was that phone route that was showing us how to get to 10.100.0.0 slash 25. Where is it? Well, if we go to this drop down, we can see there's a VRF phones, which we just created. And the phone network will now be in VRF phones. So anything going to 10.100.0.0 slash 25, which is on that phone VLAN, 
will now be routing on this new VRF. So what is the impact? What, what does this do now? So if I go back to my LAN PC, and if I ping that 10.100.0.50 now, I can't get there anymore. So I've accomplished one thing for the VRF, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I've totally broken something else as well. And that will be is if I go onto this phone machine, which is just a, another machine on Eve. <laughs> um, so it's not an actual phone, but just imagine it was one. If I go into this device's terminal, and if I run a ping to 192.168.20.100, which was the LAN computer, I can't get there either, which is expected. And if I do a ping 2.1, which is the router, I can get there, but that's because the router is still technically live and it's doing a, a lookup on its own local thing. But I can't get anywhere else. I can only get to my own network now. So I can only get to 10.100.0.1. And the reason for that is if I go back into this um, win box, in my route list, I don't have any other routes to get anywhere else. So this is actually quite a bad scenario for me because I've actually messed up my connection for this, uh, the phone network. So there's a few ways you can fix it. Um, typically what I would see or what I would do is if I'm running an ISP, then I'm typically going to have a WAN link going to the customer. And on this WAN link, I would be running multiple VLANs to actually break out. I would give myself a voice VLAN on the WAN in order to get breakout. And I would give myself a, maybe a data VLAN for the, the internet. And if there's other stuff like video conferencing, I'll do that as well. Reason being is then we can add those interfaces into the same VRF. And it would also again, allow us to break out and we can continue as we we've always have. And the nice thing about doing that, and, and people usually give this the term PVC or private virtual circuit, um, is we can now assign QoS as well, specifically to those separate VLANs on their separate VRFs, so that the data never leaks and you've, you've basically got very clean queues as well then. So let's do that. Let's just add another interface on this client CPE1. We're going to create that on the WAN. So I'll go into Winbox to do this quickly. And I'll just go to the VLANs, add a VLAN. Let me call this the voice WAN. And we're going to make this VLAN 101. And it will be on Ether1, which is my WAN link out. I'm going to apply this. And looking at my topology, I don't have any IP address planned for it yet. So I'm just going to make one up in my head quickly. So let's just do something like 172.20.0.2 slash 30. And I'm going to assign this to my voice WAN. I'm going to have to do the same on this other router. So let me just quickly do that. So I'm connecting to Ramon. I'm going to my PE1. So I'm just going to go into the interfaces, go into the VLAN, add a new VLAN, call this customer one voice. Our VLAN ID is 101 and our interface will be ether four, which is the link that is going to customer one or client one. Let's apply this. Let's add an IP address. So this IP was 172.20.0.1 slash 30. And our interface will be the customer voice apply. And there we go. So if we go back onto the client one router, and if I want to quickly just run a ping, let's see, can I ping 172.20.01? Yes, I can. So that means the WAN is up. But what we need to do is add this WAN link into the VRF as well. So if I go into my routes, I can see there's my voice WAN. So let's just go to VRF, double click the routing mark, click on this down arrow and then select voice WAN and apply this. So now the voice WAN is also a part of the VRF phones. So now we have 
routes to get to the phone network and a way to get to our ISP core as well in order to, you know, route traffic. But this routing table is still pretty barren. It's got no default route. It, it doesn't have any way to actually get out yet. So let's just add a default route. What you can do is click on the plus. And if you're in a VRF in any router, it will automatically fill in that routing mark, but you can manually fill it in. And then let's say it's a default route, so that's fine. And then our gateway will be 172.20.0.1. Apply that. And now we've got a default route to actually get out to the ISP network and break out. I still need to also just do one more thing on the ISP network but this will just be a pretty basic static route so that we can get back to that phone network. So let's just add a static route for it, 10.100.20.0, no, not dot, sorry, not, not dot 20, dot zero dot zero slash 25. And our gateway is 172.20.02. Let's apply that. And that's the customer voice now. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is quickly just uh, run a test. So let's go into the client one router. Let's see if we can ping. That's fine. Let's quickly see, can we actually ping out? So I'm going to go into this phone machine again. And let's see, can I actually ping my ISP network, which is 172.20.0.1. Network is unreachable, but I know why it's unreachable. There's no route on this um, Docker. So let's just quickly add a route for it. It's going to be route add net 172.200.0 net mask 255.255.255.252. And my gateway will be 10.100.0.1, which is the router on ether zero. So if I run a ping now, awesome, I can break out. So now we've actually set up a completely separate VRF on the client router so that the phone has its own routing table. And the LAN is just a part of the main routing table. If you wanted to carry that over, you could put the LAN in its own routing table as well, call it VRF underscore LAN or just LAN and do the same type of configuration. So that is the basic of VRF Lite where we install virtual routing and forwarding on a single router. In the next lesson, I'll show you actually how to span this across the entire network where customer one or client one might have another office. And then this is just so that these two offices still are in the same routing instance, but for the ISP network, it doesn't matter. So if there were other customers using the same subnets, it wouldn't be an issue. All right, cool. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.